If you were ever wondering what is the hardest thing after writing in IELTS, let me tell you, it's speaking. Speaking is something where a lot of people get nervous, they make mistakes, and mostly they're not using the right strategies. Because if you really have the right technique and approach, you know what makes examiners happy. If you just use that, it's actually very easy to get a good speaking score. We've had students for months and they haven't got below eight in speaking. And that's thanks to some of the really veteran techniques that we have used, that we continue to use, and that continues to make examiners happy. Today, we're gonna teach you exactly that. And once you learn these techniques, all you gotta do is practice and revisit this video, repeat, and you will understand how easy it is to get a band eight in speaking so if you're stuck at band 6 or 6.5, or if you don't know your level, most likely you're self-studying, you don't know where you stand, just work on these techniques and your speaking will sound amazing. Okay, one thing we need for speaking is the help of connecting words, okay? So connecting words is very are very important when you talk about going from one point to another within an answer, because you're going to be answering yourself, so... You go between different points or when you talk about this thing right here, the cue card. Okay, so in the cue card, you are talking for two minutes. And if you don't have any connectors, you would mostly be saying and, 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 um, and you will say, you know, like, kind of, and all those things will kill your marks. So the purpose of connecting words is to help you get rid of all those issues and use more professional words that shows the examiner a range of vocab and also it shows them that you are in control. Plus, when you start using them, you would understand how structured you sound like. You would be able to control the points you want to make and at what times you want to make those points. For example, there's one conjunction here. It says furthermore. So furthermore is used when you go from one point to another. So instead of me saying and, I can say furthermore. Look at how this sounds. I love. I would love to be a pilot because that is my lifelong dream and it'll also help me make some good income. Now, same thing. I've always wanted to be a pilot since it's been my lifelong dream. Furthermore, it will help me make good income. See how different both sound? Which one will give you more mark? Obviously the one with furthermore. The ones with conjunctions, with a variety of conjunctions, will make you sound more professional. It'll help you also understand, you know, here I finished point one and now I'm going to point two. So it's almost like you're telling yourself point one, furthermore point two, likewise point three, so you can count. And the examiner is sitting there being impressed at your vocab and at your power of structuring and sounding so amazing. Let's look at these words and you can get your pen and paper ready or you can pause this video and take a screenshot. Some really good conjunctions to use when you go from one point to another are furthermore, likewise, accordingly, moreover, other than that and apart from that. Not more, not less. For a speaking test in IELTS, these are more than enough. What you want to do is keep switching from one to the other to the other, then back and just go back and forth with them. A lot of people go and pick one favorite. So I hear furthermore, for example, furthermore in the whole test. That's also wrong. So the reason I'm mentioning multiple is so that you have a variety. Uh, this is really helpful. And then linking words are the next thing. So if you are asked to give a list, okay, list two things that you like doing at home, list three things that you have done uh, that you're proud of, etc. If you're being given a list, or if it's not specifically numbers, but they say, provide the advantages of cell phones, right? So you want to make a list, and that's where you're counting, then you can say firstly, secondly, thirdly, or lastly, instead of thirdly, if it's secondly, it could be secondly, lastly, um, and those are some linking words. But I would say use them once or twice in the whole test. Don't use them again and again because these are pretty common. People use them a lot. So it won't show the examiner that you're any unique. But sometimes you need to use them and that's why it's handy. Comparison words are, again, very useful. And again, it shows the variety of your vocab to the examiner. When you're comparing different things, you can use while, whereas, as compared with, on the other hand. So to pick a few and give some examples, you can say, um, I was trying to move my apartment and I was trying to find a good place while my friends were offering me to stay in their basement. 
something like this as compared with you can say I would rather find a place close to my university as compared with living with my friends which is going to be far right so with comparison words you can put two things happening simultaneously or being compared and again gives you a range of words to use contradictory words again however everybody knows however nevertheless and nonetheless what are these words they are the exact same things like however so let me tell you it's very simple wherever you say however simply insert nonetheless or nevertheless okay so it's the easiest thing in the world to do now all you got to make sure is use a variety okay throughout the test go nonetheless nevertheless however and back and forth okay show the examiner that you know multiple words although it's another good one it just is something different because although is used only at the start of the sentence so when you say although it's usually two things that come after the word although for example although I really want to move in with my friends then comma if you're writing that next point I would find it really burdensome for them if I'm living there rent free okay so although never comes in between it's usually at the start of the sentence and it's again a contradictory word but a little different because it goes at the start concluding words you need to know these for sure these are so important because many times when we finish our ideas what do we say so that's all so that's it so that's it you know like it's the so and it's usually you're you know that that word sucks and that's why you say so you know you're almost embarrassed when you say it in the exam and the worst thing is sometimes people don't even say that people don't even conclude their answers now you don't need to conclude every answer there are gonna be so many questions okay uh, you will find some places though where you do want to conclude you find that it's not clear enough and you want to add a concluding sentence and you should know these four words hence therefore consequently as a result they're all the same words it can you can use them in the same tone just to conclude not only at the end of your answer but also at the end of a point or before you move to the next point you can use these effectively okay I don't want to give you more there's so many more you know there's thus and thereby and so on but if you're using a lot it means you're using way too much so four should be enough maybe you use one two or three times so maximum you should use like seven concluding sentences in one exam hence these words will not only help you but these are approximately the perfect number that you need for one 15 to 20 minute speaking test in IELTS uh, and again very handy it shows you have good vocab gives you the mark for a vocab and you will feel so much in control when you use them instead of just going with and and so and um moreover and yeah I'm, I'm using moreover too it's really effective uh, moreover when you say um so and all these words you actually lose marks so it's not a joke that we're just replacing it for fun but you actually lose marks if you're using a bunch of filler so one thing you want to do starting today is avoiding ums and uh, you knows and replacing them with these at the same time you don't ha always have to put connecting words again you want to show the examiner a variety if you notice the way I'm talking, I'm doing the exact same thing. I said moreover a while ago, but I haven't used a connector for the last few sentences. What I'm using is pauses. Okay, so I'm pausing between different sentences and that's equally effective. But I wanna show the examiner that I can pause, I can use connectors and I can avoid my fillers. Okay, so with this little thing said, Let's have a look at this test and this is from this really good website ieltsblog.com ieltsblog.com you just go there type recent exams this the, this website is the best one because uh, this exam is from australia and they have exams from all over from india iran and canada and so many places so these exams are the same all over the world they're the same things as long as they're recent that's what you want to go after these questions repeat so many times. In fact, I can guarantee you this much. If you go down here, or well, you check the tests over here, and there's some more on the left-hand side for the speaking tests. They're uh, speaking, they're speaking tips, and let's see, recent IELTS exams. Yeah, you can go here, and there will be so many speaking tests. If you do approximately 100 tests, when you go in your exam, 80% of the questions you have seen will repeat. And if you have the time to do 500 speaking tests, then almost 100% questions in your exam 
will be something you have already practiced. So do go on this site, practice from here. It's really cool. It's really a good site. Now, they have introduction, which is basically part one of your speaking, cue card part two, and your part three, which is the discussion. Okay, let's look at the first four questions. These four questions almost never change. So we can make a pattern for them, all right? We'll make a pattern for them. We'll make a little template. We will not make a template for the rest of them. The reason we don't make a template for the rest of them is number one, they're always different. So even if I teach you a template, you will get something completely different in the exam and you will waste time learning the same words that you cannot use. Secondly, when in speaking, we use lots of templates, students sound robotic and the examiners can see that you have learned it and you lose marks. In writing, we have a lot of templates, a lot more, because in writing, the examiner cannot judge your tone. In speaking, they can see that you have prepared it. So what we want to do is just prepare on the first four, not too many, and first four in a way that we can still say them naturally. Plus, these are going to repeat, so we, we would know what to do. All right. The very time when this, the examiner, and usually you can see it, when they start their sound recorder, you are in the exam. Now everything you say is going to be marked. Starting with the very first question, what is your name? If you say Mark Wahlberg, Mark, Mark Wahlberg, okay, I just thought about it. Okay, your name is Mark Wahlberg. So your answer is Mark Wahlberg. You will lose a point. Why? Because you are supposed to answer the full question. My full name is Mark Wahlberg. Okay, where do you come from? Again, not just you wouldn't say Greece. I come from or I am from this city, mention the city as well, and the country. We just do this for the sake of being more complete. So I'm from Sandorini in Greece. Okay. Uh, oh, what city are you from? This is another question. Okay. If, well, if you answered that in the first part, they won't ask you. So you would actually save a question. Um, and then do you work or study? You know what? They're missing one question here which is usually not like they don't ask these two questions. It's usually where do you come from? One question. The other question instead of this is usually can I see your ID? And that's simple. When you give your ID, simply say here you go and smile. Okay, here you go and smile. Uh, that's also important because when people say can I see your ID and the student simply gives the ID without saying anything, it does look awkward. So again, we're keeping our image in a way that we show that we're able to communicate comfortably, like we're not nervous at all. So yes, here you go. Then the last uh, last question, well, and the, these four should be, do you work or study? Now, if you study, again, you can take your notes. If you study, what you should mention is where you study and what you're studying. So you would say, for example, Yes, I'm studying right now. I'm doing the Bachelors of Commerce from the University of Toronto. Okay. After this, you want to describe it a little. For all questions, you need to make a little description. Two points should be good. Okay. Now you talk about what you're studying within these two points. One point could be, I love this uh, subject because it entails everything related to mathematics, which is always has always been my passion. On top of that, this is something that I can complete within two years instead of four, which is why I prefer this. So now you described your study. Okay, that's one way to do it. But if you're working, again, you would start with the first sentence explaining your job title, and then your company name. So do you work or study? I'm currently working as a cook in KFC. Okay. After this, once again, two points describing what you do. So now you describe your work. I'm working right now as a cook at KFC. My job mainly entails just getting all the food prepared before rush hour. So customers are ready with their food. Moreover, I'm supposed to clean everything at the end of the shift, which can get annoying. However, that's also part of my duties. Okay, so that's it. Now you have complete answers for all these questions. This one, of course, you would improvise based on what you're doing. Don't copy my examples, just do what you're just say what you're actually doing in life, because there will be follow up questions, like they might ask you about KFC. And if you're not working there, you wouldn't know the answer. So make sure to prepare an answer like this for yourself, write it down somewhere and memorize it. Don't sound robotic, though, when you memorize it, just memorize it and try to sound natural. Okay, so 
up to here, you should be band nine because you know these are coming. You should prepare for it and be perfect in, in these questions. No excuse for you to lose any mark in these questions. Uh, and again, the, this question should have been, can I see your ID? So usually it's that question. Okay, now let's get into all these questions here. Within this discussion, I'll be talking to you guys about emphasis and tone. I'll talk about the amount of points you have to do, like the elaboration. Do you do two points or three or four? I'll tell you when to stop, when not to stop. And it's all part of what we're going to do next. So I'm not making an extra section where I tell you these are the things you're marked on, but I'm going to explain to you the questions and go with that with examples. I'll show you how you can you can gain better marks in the IELTS speaking. Okay, so right away for the next questions, after the first four questions, for the next questions, the first thing you want to understand is you should do two long points or three short points. Write it down somewhere. Two long points or three short points. This is the most important lesson in the IELTS speaking. Okay, what does this mean? For example, the next question is, did you take any course to get skills related to your current job? Oh, this wouldn't be relevant in my... Okay, let me talk about this question. Do you like to hang out with friends? Why and why not? Okay, for this, I could make two points. I could say, I'm not a loner, you know, something like, I love, I hate being alone. And the other thing is, my friends are awesome. Those could be my two points. Let me elaborate. Yes, I absolutely love to hang out with friends. One reason is because I cannot be a loner. Being alone is scary, and that's the thing I hate the most. I just cannot do that to myself. Plus, with friends, especially the circle that I'm in, they're great. They're amazing people. It's always a jumble of joy to hang out with them. It's ecstatic. It's wonderful. I wouldn't sacrifice that for anything else. Okay, so you guys saw what I did here. I explained my two points with details. If I were to do three points, then it's going to be shorter. Okay, so um, do you like to hang out with friends? Yes, I absolutely do because I'm not a loner. I don't like to stay alone. Plus, my friends are amazing. I really enjoy their company. Also, I think with friends, you get to learn a lot of things. That's why I prefer to hang out with a group of people. Okay, so this time I wasn't as descriptive because the amount of points I did were more. So again, you can go two long points or three short points. Both strategies are fine. It really depends on you. If you can think, if you have the brain to think of three things, that's great. Um, I personally prefer, what I do is I prefer two points because uh, quality over quantity has always been the, the thing with um, with us, for example, at Aids Education. Uh, we always focus on that and it's a rule in life. So I, I believe that that always wins. So if you have two quality points over three quantity points, I think that's the better way to go, but it really depends on you. Okay, uh, let's pick another question. Let's do another example. So um, tell me something about advertisements. Do they play an important role in today's world? Difficult question. And this usually doesn't come in part one, but it can. So it's usually a part three type of question. But anyway, let's do two long points. Do you think they play an important role? Absolutely. I think that's the reason why advertisers pay millions of dollars for advertising. They have a huge budget for it because it has to be imperative in businesses. Plus, subconscious alerts are important in influencing people. I think scientists have done a very good job at figuring out that commercials or ads are a way of reaching people's subconscious and getting their message across. All right, so guys, that was two long points. Let's do three short ones, all right? So advertising, I think, is imperative. I mean, businesses make lots of money from it. That's why they invest in it. Plus, scientists have figured out that it's important to reach subconscious through advertisements. It really works. Also, it is a revenue generator for all the marketing agencies, and I think it creates a lot of opportunity for them. That's it. Okay. So while we're at it, let's continue. Let me pick a part three question. And guys, when you go to part three, um, it's the same thing. Two long points, three short points. It is the same thing. The only difference is the questions become more difficult. So up here, you're all personal, you know, easy questions about your job, work. What do you like to eat? Where do you like to go? 
Part three is different. It's more about uh, practical things, more serious questions, maybe about democracy. Here you can see technology, uh, maybe it's about media and more general kind of boring but serious topics. So the strategy remains the same. Let's get to it. Is technology useful in schools? I'll try this one. I think technology is extremely important in schools, especially nowadays. Kids are always attracted to digital media. They don't like writing down notes anymore. It's just a different switch in the world. Plus, it makes things easier. For example, it's much easier to save files on a computer than carrying loads of books. Okay, so I got two long points. Let's make them three short points. Is technology useful? I think it's extremely useful. I think just kids have more propensities nowadays to go towards iPads and tech gadgets. Also, it's easier than carrying a heavy load of books. To carry a laptop is much easier. Plus, I think with COVID, people are now more attracted to online learning anyway. Okay, there you go, three short points. Um, this skill you will master easily as long as you keep practicing on this website, they have tons of tests. Keep practicing and what you gotta do is use connectors. You can see by using pauses and connectors, I'm always counting where I'm doing my second point or the third point and it becomes very easy after a while, it becomes very simple. How much should you talk? Okay, a very big question. As much as you can, that is the answer. You should keep talking and uh, if you're ever thinking, should we keep talking, should we stop? Like if you have more content to speak on, just keep speaking. Examiners will stop you if you speak too much and that's fine. There is never a loss of mark when that happens. So if an examiner stops you, you don't lose a mark. I guarantee you, I promise you, you don't lose a mark at all. They stop you because obviously in IELTS, there is no guideline on how much you should speak. So just keep speaking. But they will cut your mark, they will reduce your mark if you speak less because that shows shyness, that is a timid mark and uh, that you shouldn't do. Now, with my strategy of two long points or three short points, the examiners are perfectly fine. They usually will never give you an issue because that is the exact amount of speech that you should make for each question. However, there are some examiners and let me tell you their psychology. Okay, this is how this works. If you're a really good student, they will challenge you. They will make faces at you. They will look at you maybe in an angry way or maybe in a way that they doubt you. Maybe they'll make a confused look. And that is just on purpose. They are doing that to intimidate you because you're too good and they test the really good students. Uh, so they will intimidate you and that usually means you're doing a very good job. And if it's the opposite, if you're not doing a good job, they're gonna uplift you and usually that will encourage you to do better and get a good mark but that's actually a danger sign. That shows that they're trying to encourage you because you are nowhere close to getting your result. Uh, this is what mostly happens, but sometimes, you know, you're a really good student and the examiner just supports you. They just smile with you. They don't intimidate you, so it really depends, but never think if they're making those weird expressions, never think that it's a bad sign. It's usually a very good sign. Um, however, if they say, if they verbally tell you, I want you to speak more, they don't just make the face, but they say, I want you to speak more, then you should speak more, okay? Um, with our strategy, we almost never hear that happen. We never, after two to three points, that's enough. Like nobody asks for more, but occasionally, once or twice, we hear it here and there. So that's a, an examiner trying to be difficult, trying to be challenging. No worries, you practice and you will be able to answer anything. If you're thinking how to do brainstorming, very simple again. You don't have to sit in front of your laptop every day and simply answer these questions because that can be challenging, that can be tiring. Just look at the questions and brainstorm. You don't have to speak, just make two to three points here, two to three points, two to three, three points, and so on. Keep doing them again and again, next test, and so on. This will be faster. It'll train your brain to think of more things and you will notice these questions repeat, so you will remember your old points and you will also notice that many times the points are usually the same, like almost with every question, you can talk about the jobs, like job creation. For example, let me tell you something. With the technology used in schools, I can talk about how it will welcome computer engineers in schools, it will provide jobs, okay? Or if I was doing this question, I like to hang out with friends, yeah, because all of them are always talking about useful things like career and job opportunities, so I can learn from them. So you see some points are uh, repeated. You can copy paste them every time. You don't need to come up with new points every time. 
you, you see, that's the beauty of practicing. Your brain, your brain will tell you the points that you can often repeat. All right. Uh, so that's it for the part one and part three. Once again, we are trying to avoid templates because you want to sound natural. So this is on you. You got to practice. You got to improve your grammar and vocabulary. Um, this video is non-promotional, but again, if you are interested in improving and getting feedback on your speaking, you can always contact us at www.hzadeducation.com and we'll help you out. We'll give you a free feedback and let you know where you are, what you need to do. Because grammar and vocab, that is hard to improve. That I cannot give you suggestions on without seeing how you speak. So we can give you suggestions on what you can improve by watching this quick video. And that's what we'll do right now with the cue card. Again, with this cue card, I'm going to tell you guys a few words that will essentially help you structure it better and sound more professional, sound more in control, sound more confident, and make sure that you can tackle every cue card with these strategies. So what happens when we hear students do their very first attempt on the cue card? Here's what happens. Today I would like to talk about. Today I'm given the to this topic about. Or I'm very happy to talk about this topic. Addressing the topic is the most common habit. Examiners don't reward you for common habits. They reward you for unique things that you do. So a unique thing could be this. You can write it down. There are many and one of them is. I repeat, there are many and one of them is. This you can use for any cue card. For example, talk about a vacation. You can say, there are many vacations I have been to and one of them was in Somalia where I went here. Okay, talk about a childhood memory that you have. There are many childhood memories that I have and one of them is this one. In this case, talk about a, a kind of electronic device you would like to buy. There are many devices and many possessions, in fact, that I would like to buy, and one of them is an iPhone. All right. So again, with uh, this start, you're able to use this at the start of every cue card. It doesn't have a lot of fancy wording because we're trying to sound natural. We're also trying to make a template that can be applicable to any and all questions, which this one is. The other words you need to learn are, you can write these down, furthermore, likewise, and finally, so once you start the question, you just talk about, you know, there are many electronic devices, electronic devices, and the one I prefer is an iPhone. Now you're talking about this question, what kind of device that is. As soon as you go to the next question, you want to say furthermore, and it says why you want to buy it. So furthermore, I want to buy it because whatever. Likewise, and then it's talking about features. So you say likewise, the features I would prefer are whatever. Finally, is it reasonable to buy it? Finally, it is extremely reasonable to buy it because, okay? So once again, you are now structured. You have connectors, vocabulary mark, and you have a structure that will make sure you answer every question exactly how it needs to be. Now, here's the confusion, okay? Um, how many, how, like how much elaboration should each question have? I've had, I've met one examiner who said, the first three questions don't matter. The last one does. So make sure you spend lots of time on the last one. The other examiner said, all the questions matter. And the third examiner said, none of them matter as long as you talk about the main idea. So there's really a divide in what each examiner thinks. And that's why it's very subjective uh, between examiners. However, there cannot be a problem if you answer all questions perfectly. Nobody's going to complain about that, obviously. So that is the best approach. And our strategy, our recommended strategy, is to make sure to answer two points per question. Okay, so two points, two points, two points, two points. Total eight points. Um, if you have three bullets, then total six points. And that usually is enough for two minutes. And it makes sure it makes sure that uh, you are elaborating enough and no examiner can complain. All right, so you start off, you have some connectors, and when you finish, what you gotta do at the finish is say, you can write this down, that's all that I have for you today. I hope you liked my conversation. That's all that I have for you today. I hope you liked my conversation. Okay, again, natural, and something like that, that's all that I have for you today is something that 
you know, Seinfeld, Seinfeld, he says that at the end of his comedy routines, uh, Joe Rogan, you know, these kind of people, Barack Obama, when people, public speakers finish off their speech, they usually say, that's all that I have for you today. It's a very professional thing to say. And uh, you're pleasing the examiner, kind of sucking up to them by saying that I hope you liked what I said, okay? Or I hope you liked my conversation. I hope you liked my monologue, etc. Okay, let's do an example. Let me show you guys that this actually works. Let me read this question again. Oh, about that. Now I'm going to read it, right? So we're going to brainstorm. Um, don't write anything down. That thing that they give you, that pen and paper, is the biggest trap, Okay. Whatever you write down, you don't look at it at it in the speaking when you actually speak because people usually are so nervous when they're speaking, they don't have time to look at that. And if you do look at that, you lose marks because you don't have eye contact. Then again, um, mostly what you write down, you don't even remember because when you're speaking, you speak randomly. So please just don't write anything down. Just in the preparation time, all you got to do, think of two points, two points, two points, two points. Just remember them in your head. I promise you the next minute you will not forget. And even if you do forget, you will come up with something else. Don't worry about that. Look, in real life, when you talk to friends, do you ever make notes? No, right? That's why you sound so natural. If you do the same thing here, you would sound natural if you don't make notes, that is. So let's do that. Let's do two points per question. Um, I wouldn't take any preparation time. I just want to read this quick. Electronic device you want to buy. What kind of device? Why do you want to buy it? And uh, what kind of features? The device has a reason to buy it and why. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to count my two minutes. There are many electronic devices that I would love to buy. I relish technology. One of those things I believe I would love at this moment would be an iPhone 12. An iPhone 12 has been the buzz in the market for the past few months. Uh, it has to be the model 12 because that has apparently all the fancy features. Furthermore, I want to buy it because it has a very good price right now. In fact, you know what's weird is it's even cheaper than iPhone 11 and that has never happened. The newer model is more expensive always. However, this is not pricey. Plus, it also has a bunch of features that will help me for my business because it is apparently very fast and it has notes, pages, calendar. It has everything that a businessman would require. Likewise, the features other than that that I need for just my own sanity are games. I love playing video games. Who doesn't? Especially at my age, I cannot live without games. I don't own a PS4 but I do own cell phones and I make sure I have quality games there. This cell phone apparently has a lot of games already installed in it. On top of the fast internet connection that it provides, that's another feature I just absolutely adore. I would make use of that every day, being a businessman again. Finally, it is of course so reasonable to buy it at this moment. It is not even a joke considering the low price. And again, it is the talk of the town. It is the model to buy. Model 12, it's everywhere. Every advertisement about iPhones is about model 12. So why not? I would love to buy it. This is one thing I would be proud to own. And that's all that I have for you today. I hope you liked my conversation. That's it, guys. So that's, I think, should be two minutes or maybe a little lesser. And if it is lesser, I'll try to speak more. I don't have an examiner to stop me. I also didn't cheat. You know, I didn't look at my stopwatch because you don't get to see that in the exam. So just keep speaking, all right? And that's it. That is the end of our speaking. You got some samples, you got some strategies. The final thing I'll tell you guys is emphasis. Did you guys notice how I was emphasizing my points, how I was using my tone? Still right now, I'm fluctuating my volume up and down, okay? Um, when I was once in, a, oh, by the way, I'm here in Canada, in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I was in my condo unit. Um, I saw an immigrant, no, no need to mention his country, and I saw uh, a Caucasian, a person, a native speaker here living in Canada. When the two talked, they were talking about weather, and the guy who was an immigrant, he said, the weather is so good outside, it is really warm. You see, no emphasis in it or anything. The native speaker responded, she said, oh yeah, the weather today, it's extremely warm. It is awesome outside. You see the difference in emphasis? That's the difference that exists between native speakers and immigrants. And native speakers use a lot of emphasis, a lot. Um, you don't believe me, you haven't noticed? 
do, do me a favor, go on YouTube and type Laura Dern interview. Okay, she, she's that lady in Jurassic Park and Star Wars. She really emphasizes her words a lot. Okay, she kind of does it too much, but I don't want to do it as an overkill, but um, that's a good example to learn from on how emphasis is done. Um, we kind of need to dial up everything in the IELTS test, so it's not a problem if you exaggerate a little. If you're monotone in life, start acting, you know, start faking it. You got to do a lot of emphasis when you show excitement, uh, when you show a quality of something, like when you use adjectives. Adjectives are qualities, right? That's where you have to have a high pitch. For example, uh, when you say this car is really good, uh, really good, good is the adjective. So you raise your volume there. This car is really good. Okay, not just this car is really good. So you have a mark for emphasis and tone. And the more you fluctuate your volume, the better you will be. You don't have to try too hard, just be natural. Because when you're natural, when you're laughing with friends, when you're comfortable, you will be having those fluctuations in volume when you emphasize any point. Uh, but if you are nervous in the exam, you will be robotic. So keys to practice. Uh, another thing you guys can do is practice with the people sitting outside the examination room. So a lot of times there are people sitting outside and they honestly, Anyone who asks them, hey, hey guys, you have your exam in a few minutes, I have my exam too, do you wanna to practice? They will always say yes. Okay, so those guys sitting outside, practice with them. They always give you a little warm up. And if you don't have them around, just warm up in a washroom just before the exam or just warm up sitting down there, just keep repeating words, whispering to yourself, and that will get you prepared and ready for the exam. Um, accent, doesn't matter accent doesn't matter at all trust me there's no mark for it a lot of people think it matters it doesn't matter at all uh, don't worry about the accent just make sure you're clear and another way to be very effective at being clear is by opening your mouth wide every time you speak that will ensure all your words are clear when they come out I don't think there's anything else you need to know. These are the things you need to know. All the rules, all the strategies, all the things that examiners are looking for are in this video. Just listen to it, repeat it a few times to get a good idea. Copy me, try to copy the templates for sure. And practice, practice with your friends, uh, practice with your family or get a teacher and practice with a teacher. If you want our help, you can go to our website and we'll find you a qualified teacher who can give you a free feedback to start off. And uh, I hope this really helps and gives you a great score as it has for all our students in the past. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you very soon. Take care.